Trump criticizes Harris's crowd size and IQ at news conference. Former President Donald Trump attacked his presidential opponent, Vice President Kamala Harris, in a lengthy and sometimes meandering news conference on Thursday. Trump announced he would debate Harris on ABC News on September 10 at his first open news conference since Governor Tim Walz was picked Harris's running partner. Trump did not identify Walz during the over-an-hour Mar-a-Lago news conference. Trump answered press questions but repeatedly strayed off-topic to make misleading statements about the 2020 race. Here are key takeaways, Trump keeps attacking Harris's ethnicity, gender, IQ. Trump maintained prejudice charges that Harris only lately mentioned her black roots. Well, you'll have to ask her that question because she's the one who said it, I didn't say it, Trump lied. You must ask her. Trump has attributed Harris's achievement to her gender and questioned her intelligence. I'm not a great fan of his brain, but I think that she's actually not as brilliant as he is, he stated, referencing his former opponent, President Joe Biden. Well, she's a lady. Trump said that she represents specific communities. Harris addressed Trump's remarks later in the day. I was too busy talking to voters. She told reporters she didn't hear. Questions about Harris's rallies make Trump defensive. Responding to Harris's recent rally audience size, Trump became extremely upset. Oh, give me a break, he told a reporter, former President Donald Trump addresses media at Mar-a-Lago on August 8. 2024, in Palm Beach, Florida. Alex Brandon slash AP. I address the largest crowds. Nobody has spoken to larger crowds than me, he claimed. Trump cited the January 6th crowd in Washington, D.C. when asked if he left office peacefully. The former president compared his speech before the incident to Martin Luther King Jr.'s 1963 march on Washington which drew 200,000 people, according to the U.S. Census. We have the same physical estate, everything, and number of people that Martin Luther King did when he gave his magnificent speech. If not, we had more, he said. According to data, 10,000 individuals visited Capitol grounds on January 6. Trump appears to change abortion pill stance. Trump also appeared to change his mind about abortion pills, suggesting he could order the FDA to ban Mifepristone, which Project 2025 supports. Absolutely. Those things are pretty, open and humane, he remarked when asked if he would ask the FDA to ban the medicine. But you need to vote. All I want to do is give everyone a vote, which is happening now. The Trump team then reiterated the former president's support for state-based abortion regulations. After the news conference, Trump campaign National Press Secretary Caroline Levitt said, as President Trump said, he wants everybody to vote on abortion issues, which is consistent with his long-held position of supporting states' rights to make abortion decisions, Trump told reporters abortion has very much cooled down. He said, I think it's actually going to be a very modest issue. Last month, ABC News slash Washington Post slash Ipsos showed that 57% of Americans considered abortion access a major factor in their vote. The former president said he supported abortion exceptions but thought states should decide. Florida will have a ballot issue seeking a constitutional right to abortion before fetal viability. Trump promised a press conference at some time in the near future. Florida will vote on that and I think it will go more liberally than people imagined. My announcement will be at the right time, he remarked. Trump thinks Harris's honeymoon will last through DNC. Harris and Walls are campaigning in seven battleground states. Trump argued his tour was different since he was leading in those states. He anticipated Harris's honeymoon period will end soon. It's ending. The honeymoon ends. Her period and convention are coming up, he remarked.